Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Gish Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 17th of December. India Bangladesh Inc. 7 packs restore cross border rail link to bolster ties. Pakistan's Prime Minister speaks to Afghanistan's President, pledges help towards Afghan ceasefire. And Nepal's Prime Minister Oli agrees to revoke controversial ordinance after backlash. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladesh counterpart Sheikh Hasina held a virtual meet on Thursday aimed at bolstering ties. Both the countries sealed seven agreements to expand cooperation in diverse areas and restored a cross-border rail link Chilahati Haldibari which was in operation till 1965. India and Bangladesh on Thursday sealed seven agreements to expand cooperation in diverse areas and restored a cross-border rail link which was in operation till 1965. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina on Thursday, jointly inaugurated the Chilahati Haldibari Rail, linking the borders of the two neighbouring countries. They also inaugurated the Bangabandhu Bapu Digital Exhibition and released a commemorative stamp on Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, pointing out that Bangladesh is a significant pillar of India's neighbourhood first policy. Modi said New Delhi would cater to the coronavirus vaccine needs of its neighbor. Santosh ka vishay hai ki is kathin samay mein Bharat aur Bangladesh ke beech achcha sahiyog raha. Chahe wo dawaiya ya medical equipment ho ya phir health professional ka ke saath kaam karna ho vaccine ke kshetra mein bhi हमारे बीच अच्छा सहयोग चल रहा है इस सिलसिले में हम आपकी आवश्यकताओं का भी विशेष ध्यान रखेंगे इंडिया इज आवर ट्रू फ्रेंड सेड शेख हसीना थैंकिंग इंडिया फॉर इट सपोर्ट ड्यूरिंग 1971 बांग्लादेश लिबरेशन वॉर आई पे माय ग्रेटिट्यूड टू द गवर्नमेंट एंड द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया हु एक्सटेंडेड देयर होल हार्टेड सपोर्ट for the cause of our liberation. The summit is being held a day after Vijay Divas, which marks India's victory over Pakistan in the 1971 war that led to the creation of Bangladesh as an independent nation. India's Supreme Court on Thursday asked the central government to consider putting three new farm laws on hold as thousands of farmers continue to protest against the legislation at borders of Indian capital, New Delhi. The court once again suggested formation of a panel to find a solution to the deadlock in talks between the Farmers' Union and the government. India's Supreme Court on Thursday asked the central government to explore the possibility of putting the implementation of three new controversial farm laws on hold as it suggested a panel be formed with representatives from all stakeholders the farmers' unions as well as government nominees to find a solution to the deadlock in talks. The Supreme Court during Thursday's hearing held up the rights of the farmers to protest, who have been camping at borders of Indian capital New Delhi since late November, demanding repeal of the laws that deregulate the agriculture sector. The court, however, said that a protest cannot endanger a common man's life or hamper it in any way. Chief Justice S. A. Bobde said the matter will be now heard by a vacation bench next week as no pharmacists unions were present in the Supreme Court and that is why no orders can be passed now. और संविधान के दायरे में रहकर हमारा आंदोलन चल रहा है पूरी तरह अहिंसात्मक है अभी तक इस आंदोलन से कोई जनहानि क्षति किसी प्रकार की किसी को हम लोगों ने नहीं पहुंचाई है जहां तक कोर्ट का सवाल कहना यह है कि एक कमेटी बने और कमेटी तय करे 
अगर कोर्ट ऑर्डर करता है या सरकार को एडवाइज करता है कमेटी के लिए तो कमेटी बनाए और कमेटी में निर्णय किया जाए मीन वाइल सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड सिख प्री संत बाबा राम सिंह डाइड बाई सुड एट वन ऑफ दार्मासिस्ट प्रोटेस्ट साइट एट डेली बॉर्डर लेट ऑन वेंसडे इन हिस्स सुसाइड नोट डूइंग राउंड ऑन सोशल मीडिया सिंह सेड ही वॉज हर्ट टू सी दी कंडीशन ऑफ द प्रोटेस्टिंग फार्मर्स blaming government apathy for singh suicide opposition congress leader rahul gandhi said prime minister narendra modi's administration should immediately repeal the laws pm modi has tried to assure farmers the changes will bring them new opportunities but few have been convinced a severe cold wave has gripped several areas in northern india including the national capital region and punjab state In capital New Delhi and its neighboring areas, the temperature dropped sharply on Thursday with lowest reading at 3.5 degrees Celsius. Locals were seen covering themselves up in woolens as they stepped out to carry out their daily activities or take a walk. The Indian Meteorological Department has said that the cold wave conditions are very likely to remain for next two days. Located in the tropics, most of India witnesses a very hot summer and a largely temperate winter. Snowfall in regions like Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh has a direct impact in other northern states. Cold day is likely to slightly intensify tomorrow and day after tomorrow, and after that, uh, since uh, next western disturbance is uh, going to affect northwest India under its influence, the temperature is likely to rise by three to four degrees. Uh, so from 20th onward, we are expecting some relief from uh, such cold conditions. Moving on, the next polls in Pakistan-administered Kashmir are few months away as the present Legislative Assembly will complete its five-year term in July 2021. Locals in the illegally occupied region blame the ruling government has done nothing to address the public concerns over the years. and by not holding municipal elections for over two decades they have favored corruption by installing their party workers in several institutions general elections are scheduled to be held in pakistan administered kashmir next year raja farooq haider the prime minister of pakistan administered kashmir recently exuded confidence that his party pakistan muslim league nawaz will sweep the polls to the legislative assembly without entering into an alliance with any party or group locals in the region blamed the ruling government has done nothing to address the public concerns over the years and has put them on pt of circumstances with no development in sight and by not holding municipal elections for over two decades they have favored corruption by installing the party workers in several institutions आज़ाद कश्मीर के अंदर 28 सालों में बलदियाती इंतबात का ना करवाना बुनियादी तौर पे इस सदवार में जो जो हुकूमतें गुजरी हैं वो सारी इस करप्शन को परवान चढ़ाने के लिए इन अदारा जात के अंदर जो करप्शन है उसको परवान चढ़ाने के लिए इन्होंने ये डोंग रचाया हुआ है और अपने सियासी चेलों को सियासी चेहतों को जो है वो इन अदारों के ऊपर काबू करने के लिए उनकी नामजदगियाँ करते हैं जिसके ज़रिए से ये करप्शन करते हैं नौजवान की आदत को आगे नहीं आने दिया जाता Locals have accused there is a prime minister and president in Pakistan at the Mr Kashmir but they are merely stooges who have been helping Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredation Moving on to news from Afghanistan Afghan president Ashraf Ghani spoke to Pakistani prime minister Imran Khan over a telephone call on Wednesday during which Khan pledged to help reduce violence and push for a ceasefire between the Taliban and Afghan forces in Afghanistan this comes as a group of Taliban leaders is in Islamabad to discuss the Afghan peace process with the Pakistani leadership Afghan president Ashraf Ghani spoke over telephone with Pakistani prime minister Imran Khan on Wednesday evening and discussed the Afghan peace process and their concerns over the escalation of violence in Afghanistan Afghan presidential palace spokesman Sadiq Siddiqui taking to Twitter informed Khan told Ghani that Pakistan will help Afghanistan bring down the level of violence leading to ceasefire in his country Khan also reiterated Pakistan's steadfast support for the Afghan led and Afghan owned peace process for a political solution to the conflict in Afghanistan 
This comes as a Taliban delegation headed by Deputy Leader Mullah Baradar is visiting Islamabad to discuss the Afghan peace process with the Pakistani leadership. Meanwhile, the chairman of the High Council of National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, on Wednesday said that the next venue for the second round of peace negotiation talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban will be determined in coordination between the negotiators from the two sides and that the issue of the venue should not cause any delays for holding the talks. The Afghan peace talks, which were being held in Doha since September, have been halted till January without deciding the venue for the next round of talks. In news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has agreed to withdraw the ordinance on the Constitutional Council Act that he issued earlier this week. The move came after widespread backlash by the opposition and some leaders of his ruling Nepal Communist Party. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Wednesday agreed to withdraw the ordinance on the Constitutional Council Act that he issued and got endorsed by President Bidya Devi Bhandari on Tuesday. A standing committee meeting of the ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP on Wednesday took a decision to this effect, as per which the government led by party chair PM Oli will revoke the ordinance, which reduced the quorum for holding the meeting of the Constitutional Council from the existing five members to three, with a simple majority of two members enough to recommend appointments to constitutional bodies. This came after Oli had attracted widespread backlash, including from NCP co-chair Pushpa Kamal Dehel and leader of the opposition Sher Bahadur Deoba, who called the ordinance unconstitutional. Prime Minister Oli, who has been dismissing party meetings as meaningless, attended the Wednesday's meeting alongside Dehel, with whom he has been having indifferences. In a dramatic turn of events, the two NCP chairmen clinched a truce during the meeting. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Zoo in Bangladesh's seaport city, Chotagram, is witnessing a surge in footfall after it was recently reopened to public with new safety guidelines after months of shutdown due to COVID-19 pandemic. An increasing number of people are now visiting the main zoo in Bangladesh's seaport city, Chotagram, some 242 kilometers southeast of capital, Dhaka. The footfall has increased after it reopened to public after months of shutdown due to COVID-19 pandemic. Visitors are keenly interested to see hundreds of animals and their offspring, mainly a tiger scarp born in the zoo recently that is attracting the eyeballs of many. Sea beaches, tourist spots and hotels models in several regions have already opened on a limited scale. With tourist spots in the port cities slowly opening up recently, Bangladeshi government reopened the National Zoo for the visitors, maintaining proper health guidelines amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, as people are slowly getting back to the normal life, the total number of coronavirus cases surged to 495,841 as the health authorities recorded 1,632 fresh cases in the 24-hour span till Wednesday. To get infected with deadly coronavirus and come out as a survivor is itself a story that inspires many. A COVID-19 recovered patient in India, Jammu and Kashmir, is doing the same by introducing a floating ambulance at the famous Dal Lake to facilitate people in need. The COVID survivor is trying his best to make all medical facilities available on his boat. A COVID-19 recovered patient in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir has introduced a floating ambulance at the famous Dal Lake to facilitate locals in case of medical emergencies. When Tariq Ahmed Patlu recovered from COVID-19 in August, he faced discrimination from locals and his known circle of people as the deadly virus spreads easily. The taboo in his society encouraged Patru to volunteer and create something like his Shikara ambulance which can help people in need during this pandemic. Patru has put his ambulance on trial and is trying his best to equip it with all medical tools required in case of any emergency. I have prepared it now. अभी इसमें हर एक इक्विपमेंट्स लग जाएंगे जो मेडिकल एमरजेंसी इक्विपमेंट्स होंगे वो सारे इसके अंदर लग जाएंगे तो ये जैसे कि हमारा जो ऑक्सीजन है ऑक्सीमीटर्स है थर्मास 
जो भी है ब्लड प्रेशर ई जितना मुझसे हो सकता है कि मैं वो करूं इंडिया कोरोना वायरस टैली हैज क्रॉस दी 9.9 मिलियन मार्क सो फार आउट ऑफ विच जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हैज रजिस्टर्ड 4346 केसेस अलोन वेल दैट्स ऑल वी हैव फॉर यू फ्रॉम साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग नाउ आवर व्यूअर्स कैन वॉच द शो ऑन southasianewsline.com यू कैन आल्सो विजिट अस ऑन facebook.com/asianewsline एंड फॉलो अस ऑन ट्विटर एट asianewsline That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.